So a U.S. service member uh, self-emulated outside of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. And given the intensity of his actions, people are speculating that he might have been mentally ill. Because generally speaking, any extreme harm to oneself is generally spoken of in light of mental illness. But the people speculating about mental illness in this moment are doing so in bad faith. The people saying that the service member was mentally ill do not believe he was mentally ill, nor do they believe his actions to be mentally ill. What they're attempting to do is pathologize pro-Palestinian sentiment and cast the service member's actions as the end result of such pro-Palestinian mania. This is the second person to self-emulate in around three to four months um, regarding Palestine. But in the last year or so, I've heard of a handful of cases of people who are COVID conscious asking people in medical settings to mask and then being remanded to institutionalization against their will, simply because they asked the doctors and the nurses around them to wear masks. Now, you might not think that this is related, but it very much so is so. And also ties in with the care courts that disabled people have been warning people against for the last few years. The reason why I cast these things in the same light is because institutionalization oftentimes violates due process. And it is much easier to lock somebody up by declaring them as mentally ill than locking them up through the judicial system. In fact, there are far less legal ramifications and checks and balances to putting people in institutionalizations or nursing homes or mental health care facilities. And it's gotten to the point where, like people who are asking people to mask in hospital settings and people who are rightfully angry at the actions of the US government in Palestine, it has gotten to the point where people's regular reactions to trying to keep themselves safe in this system of necropolitics is pathologized to the point where they are deemed mentally ill and then can be locked up. Now, I'm not saying that the actions of the service member were not extreme. Of course they were. But more so, they were an extreme form of communication rather than an extreme form of self-harm. But the desire to tie the service member's actions to mental illness is designed to pave the path forward for institutionalizing anybody who protests. And historically, this has been the game plan. In the 60s and 70s, people who were grassroots organizers and protests were oftentimes institutionalized. And additionally, subject to psychosurgery and experimental surgeries against their will. Mental illness and institutionalization has always been something that they have weaponized against, particularly communities of color and organizers, because once you declare somebody as mentally ill, you could have complete authority over them. And not many people will believe them beyond that. And they're trying to cast all these actions under the same umbrella to make it easier to lock people up.